Hi, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Government Indicted, the website, of course, markstevens.net. Boy, we got some good ones here for you today. I didn't think I'd ever get something this explicit, but I'm going to get to that second because we have two, two dismissals to report on this time. But wait around for the second one because that's really what this is about. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty damn good. Um, the odd traffic, and I want to dispel the myth, I won't let anyone kid you when they say, well, it's just, they try to marginalize the work I do here on the No State Project, and all the, all the hundreds of tickets that have been thrown out and assessments over the years, um, they try to marginalize that to ignore the evidence, which I don't know why they have to feel that they, they need to marginalize it and kind of, you know, make stupid excuses when, they have actually come out and said they don't have to prove that their claims are true because law is magical and has a magical quality. It just applies with no evidence. Yeah. Um, but the same, tra- the same claims that are made in the traffic, the same ones for jurisdiction, are the same claims that are made in every court case. So, And no matter where you are, this is why we've been able to replicate the results in – Uh, on three continents, including Israel. So it doesn't matter. It's always based on the same stupid claim that is completely false. That is, if you are physically in Arizona, their constitution and laws apply to you. That is completely false. And you can just substitute Canada or wherever. It's all the same thing. We've, again, got many, many cases cited, signed by even the psychopath judges, um, like in this next one that we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, so don't let anyone kid you. Oh, it's just tra- no, it's not just traffic. Okay, that is some scumbag just trying to blind you or to distract you from the actual evidence, and that is that there is no government; they're just men and women forcing us to pay them. And it's that statement of fact that is com- that is irrefutable that forms the basis of why we can get these things tossed out so consistently. So we filed a motion to dismiss based on that fact, that there is no evidence proving that their constitution laws apply to anybody. Why? Because they're just men and women forcing us to pay them, and that's irrefutable. Again, that's why they have to do the stupid things and say, our rules are magic. They're called law. And when you call it a law, then evidence and reason and logic don't have anything to do with it. They actually said something to that effect. So let's look at this first one. It took place in New York, Ithaca City Court. They're on Clinton Street, Ithaca, New York. I got uh, This happened last year. Yes, it took them a while to get this over to me. But I mean, I just got it last week. I'm just getting it posted today. But uh, John got this, the ticket number I did not have to redact. Um, And you can see, please be advised that the presiding judge has dismissed the above charge. No further action is required. So it looks like the motion to dismiss granted again. And, of course, the motion to dismiss is based on a lack of evidence proving jurisdiction, territorial and subject matter jurisdiction, as well as personum jurisdiction. We can't, they can't possibly so show subject matter jurisdiction because that is not just being able to hear traffic cases. That's the important word there is case. The, to have a case or controversy, you have to have the violation of legal right and damage or a legal injury and damage. And here the legal injury is being alleged that someone violated the law, but there's not a shred of evidence that it applies. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I, I know. They don't need evidence. Well, we call BS on that. Rational people, peaceful people do. Now let's go to – so big congratulations to John for that and, for, and, and uh, thanks for sending that over to me. Now the big one. Just as they'll marginalize things saying, oh, well, the judge was just pissed off, and that's why he went and opposed the prosecution and granted the motion to dismiss. Mark, you've never had anything where the judge accepted your argument that there was no evidence of jurisdiction. Well, even though the critics have the evidence now, they will still marginalize it and say, well, it's just traffic. Well, I didn't have to... Well, I did have I, I did I was asked to redact the name and the address and phone number, but not the rest. This is the Painesville Municipal Court in Ohio, or Ohio, if you're a native. And yes, it was a speeding ticket. And there you see dismissed at state costs. And so even though the judge who did initial this did a complete douche move, and you can see it right there, after trial, 
failure to establish jurisdiction. I should do another whole video on just this particular part. But the douche move I'm talking about is their allegation or their claim that jurisdiction is a trial issue. Now, if the prosecutor could not establish jurisdiction in the first instance, when he files the complaint or you're, you're being hauled in to answer the complaint, it should have been thrown out right then and there, not after trial. Uh, so even though there was a total douche move, which is typical of these lawyers called with the robes on these, the, the judges, I did the right thing after right there after trial failure to establish jurisdiction. And what was that subject matter personam and subject matter jurisdiction, because that is what we have in the motion to dismiss. And that is what Jerry, that is what Jerry was challenging. Show me the evidence that your constitutional laws apply to me just because I'm physically in Ohio and they couldn't do it. Oh, where's some of the proof? Right here. The judge actually wrote on the dismissal failure to establish jurisdiction and he initialed it. So there you go. I don't think we can get any more explicit than that. We raise the issue of jurisdiction. We don't need a judge to agree with us, but this should silence the critics to say anything other than, well, in all these years, Mark has only one case that he could point to where a judge bought that. And I'll ex- and even that's wrong, but hey, at least it's one, a step in the right direction. It's some honest criticism. Uh, we have many times gotten tickets and assessments thrown out for lack of evidence proven jurisdiction. We just don't have it as explicit as this. So congratulations to Jerry. And uh, for those who doubt here, uh, if you think that there is evidence proving that just because Jerry was physically in Ohio that the constitutional laws applied, do what the prosecution obviously could not do. Present it. No platitudes, none of this, oh, we don't have to, none of this, hey, philosophy, dude. None of this stuff that law is magic. If you believe that these rules create real world obligations, present it, because I'd love to see it. And again, a big congratulations to Jerry and to John. I want to thank them both for sending me this evidence. Jerry, this evidence is epic. This is awesome. I really appreciate that. So if you ever have anybody who's putting the work down that it's never had, never had a ticket thrown out, right there, right there in the Painesville Municipal Court in Ohio. And my name is Mark Stevens. This is the No State Project. that's live most Saturdays from 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time on LRN.FM. The website is markstevens.net. I would love to hear... If you disagree with something I presented here, I'd love to hear your evidence. Again, website, markstevens.net.